Hello and welcome back to the Academy of Historical Fencing. Today we're bringing you a new free book, and one that actually hasn't been available freely in its complete form actually ever. Um, it's, it's Thomas Mathewson's Fencing Familiarized. Now the reason this manual is actually really quite an interesting one, apart from the fact that it's not been readily available before, is that it's a, a source on British military swordsmanship in the Napoleonic period. Now that of course is one of my absolute sort of passions within HEMA and, and collecting swords. And also, there aren't many sources in that period for British military swordsmanship. So you've got things like Roth and Angelo and Gordon as well, but there aren't many. Um, there are a few more on the cavalry side of things, but there's really not much on combat on foot, uh, defense on foot as Roth would call it. And therefore, Matheson is an incredibly valuable source. And up until now, it's not been easy to get and certainly not been available with all the plates. And therefore, uh, I've been working with um, Colin Fieldhouse and uh, Esther Gibson also been helping me with it as well to make this available. Now what that means is when we had to transcribe it from the few different sources that we got hold of, but the difficult part really was actually getting hold of the plates. Now there are quite a few plates and they're really quite nice because they don't cover just guards and techniques of partner drills, they also cover fighting against the bayonets which is a large part of the, the second part of the book. So it's really quite an interesting subject, especially as so little is written about Bayonet, especially in the period. So that's really quite cool. Um, so what we've done, I've negotiated with the Royal Armouries to use scans that they have um, of, of the actual original work. I've cleaned them and touched them up and made them look a bit smarter, but they are 100% the original plates from an actual original copy. So I've cleaned them up, put them in there. They look really nice. I've matched the format in to the original, so it is page by page, it looks right, it has the correct style fonts, it, it is all laid out correctly. The um, transcription was done by uh, Colin Fieldhouse of Scholar Gladiatoria and Esther Gibson of AHF, and then yeah, I did the artwork and all the formatting and stuff like that. So a collaborative effort between AHF and Scholar, Scholar Gladiatoria. And uh, yeah, I'm pleased to say that now you can get it free as a PDF on our club website resources page, I'll put the link in the comments. It is absolutely free, with the caveat being you cannot use it for any commercial purpose. So if you want to use it for your own research purposes, that's fine. If you want to print out copies for your own personal use, that is absolutely fine. But as ever with the stuff we put on our resources page, it is for fair use, personal use only and nothing commercial. Uh, and that has to be the case, especially in the case of this one, because the plates are from the Royal Armouries. So please feel free to share it, share it far and wide, share it any way you like and, and make use of the manual because that's what it's there for. Um, why am I holding a heavy cavalry sword? Uh, because I recently bought it and absolutely love it. And it is a form of broadsword in fact. So um, yeah, it's kind of the prop I wanted to, the, to hang on to right now because I don't put it down very often because it's really great to have one of the most famous British swords finally in my collection. So yeah. I'm going to talk about that. Now Thomas Mathewson's um, manual, like Roeth's, is designed for all cut and thrust swords used on foot. And that ranges from things like infantry hangers, to spadroons, to highland broadswords, to sabres, whether they're infantry sabres or cavalry, all the way up to the big beasties um, like the heavy cavalry trooper when it's used on foot. So it is a unified system for all cut and thrust swords. And that means there's a lot of flavour for using all sorts of different swords that were used in that period according to the methods that he shows. So um, yeah, in terms of who Matheson was, I mean, it's not a huge amount written about him, but I've done some research, I've delved into it um, based on what he kind of provides for us, because he does mention the um, Roxburgh Fencibles uh, and also the uh, Manchester and Salford Independent Rifle Regiment. So he served in one and he says he's the teacher to the other. And that's quite interesting. He actually says he's been serving about 30 years. So he was actually serving, you know, just pre the uh, American uh, Declaration of Independence and the war that followed. So a long service. Uh, he's, he's actually noted as serving in the Roxburghs from 1795 and they actually went on active service in Ireland in 1798, which is quite unusual because a fencible regiment is normally only for home service. I took we'll talk a bit more about that in the actual introduction to this work. And then yeah, he goes on to the Manchester and Salford Independent Rifle Regiment, which is, and they look like, uh, like 95th Rifles, uh, you know, green jacketed rifle troops, except for the fact, and this is highly, highly unusual, is they all to a man carried a saber and not a bayonet and that is incredibly unusual for the time so even if you go back to say the mid 18th century it was common for british soldiers at that time to be carrying both they'd have a short hanger and a bayonet carried in the same belt 
Um, but when you get to the Napoleonic period, infantrymen in the British army were not carrying swords of any kind unless they were a very specialist purpose, like um, foot artillery, uh, like the rifles that carried uh, the uh, Baker rifle sword bayonets, which are obviously quite small. But in this case, they're carrying well-curved sabres that look just like the infantry officer's sabres that we see in the Napoleonic period, the things that we'd often call a, um, a flank sabre or flank officer's sabre. They all carried them, and I talk a bit more about that in the introduction to the, to the work as well, so it's quite interesting. And as an extra little Easter egg, um, I've drawn on some parts of... Uh, of uh, Matheson's work for my latest uh, Craven's War fiction novel. So there are some elements related to the regiment, related to some of the ideas in there. So yeah, that's all thrown in, just a little bit of extra fun. Um, uh, what else is there to say about it? Uh, oh yeah, I, going through Matheson, I found my favourite piece of advice that I've seen for ages as to how to act in a fight, and it, it is to assume a bold air. Now, I absolutely love that. I'm going to be using that one from now on because that is absolutely fantastic and just says exactly what it needs to about how you should conduct yourself in the fight. So that's, that's hugely uh, amusing to me. And uh, yeah, so that's something I'll be using a bit more. Uh, and I will be showing my heavy cav off a little bit more because this is a really cool piece. And I'm going to do some drills with it because this is a rock solid, really good condition one. So I'm going to show how the different cutting mechanics work when you've got something this beastly. Because, you know, it isn't terrible in terms of handling, but it is a monster compared to some of the lightweight infantry sabers and spadrons that, you know, you're so often used to seeing. Anyway, that's a little bit off topic, but it's a heavy cab, so, you know, why not? But yeah, uh, Matheson's Manual is a really cool piece of work. It is on our website, freely available. It's another great resource from the, uh, from the Napoleonic period on British military swordsmanship on foot. So I encourage you to uh, delve into it, along with the other things that we put on there, like the two editions of Roeth, our own Sabre workbook, the Pringle Green uh, manual, there's um, the Angelo posters that are on there restored, there's the um, cavalry um, poster that's, rest that's in full quality on there. So we've really built up quite a, a, a significant pool of Napoleonic British military swordsmanship sources there. So yeah, please check out the resources page, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so.